everyone. Welcome to Along the Creative Road with Wendy Brightbill. I am back here on YouTube. Yay, I'm so thrilled to be back. And it's been quite some time. I think it's been almost, at well, I think it's been at least 10 years since I posted any new content here. A lot has happened in my business and art career. I have grown so much and I actually am kind of a little bit embarrassed about some of my older videos that are up here, but I'm not going to take them down because I do think it does encourage, I hope, some of you to know that if you actually apply yourself in your creative practice that you can improve and you can go so far in your business and also just become better as an artist. So I started out mostly as a mixed media artist and now I create mostly more fine art palette knife oil paintings, which I never expected I would be doing at this point. I have a fairly successful Etsy shop where I sell originals and prints. And I also have a platform where I teach online art classes. So if you're interested in finding out more about some of my online art classes, head over to class.wendybrightville.studio. And so I'm hoping today to share a little bit with you about my latest course, which is called Sketches on Scraps. And I just released it and it's a, such a fun course. And I just want to talk a little bit about why I decided to create this course. So I think it was maybe at the beginning of the year, sometime this year, where I was somewhat feeling a little bit burnt out in my business. And I think sometimes when you have a creative business selling your artwork, you can get so focused on creating those finished pieces of artwork that you neglect the, the experimentation and the play in your own creative practice. And let's face it, not exploring and not playing in informal ways can really drain you as an artist and it, if you want to stay fresh and continue to grow and challenge yourself, I think that you have to stay in a place where you prioritize your creative play on a regular basis. So I actually began creating just a series of works on paper and I made the commitment to do a hundred works on paper this year. And I'm, I, I actually lost count because I really don't know. I'm not good at like the follow up sometimes, but I actually think I've gone beyond those 100 works on paper. And I've just been really enjoying myself during the process of creating in this way. And I do believe that sketching is probably one of the most important disciplines for an artist to have. And also not just that, but to just experiment and play. And one of the really cool things about working on paper is that I feel like in some ways you're more willing to take risks and to try something more out of the box than you would be if you were sitting down to paint on a canvas or a board where you have this pressure to create some beautiful masterpiece. 
And so what I love about this course and just about sketching in this way in general is that it just takes those expectations off of your shoulders because you don't have to, you don't feel like you, it has to be perfect or it has to be a finished piece in the end. If you don't like it, you can just throw it away. And that is the beauty of being able to work in this informal way. So I'm excited. I actually, I actually, and I'm just gonna walk you through some of the sketches that I did for this course and talk a little bit about the process of how I created all of my pieces. I really believe that it's important to try sketching in multiple ways and explore your materials and supplies in such a way that you can decide, oh, I really like this, but I don't like that. And and I think that's really important as an artist for figuring out who you are and developing your own style. And so I hope that everyone who takes this course, they have a better sense of who they are as an artist and what they like and what they don't like. And so I'm going to walk through some of the sketches that I did for this course. And then I'm going to end this video with creating a sketch just for you guys. So enjoy. So before we do any sketching, I just wanted to share with all of you really quickly some of the sketches that I have made for my course sketches on scraps. And I just wanna talk a little bit about the materials and supplies that I used. So this is one of my favorite ones. This is a simple pen drawing, and I did it with a Sakura jelly roll that is obviously blue. And this is one of my favorites. I really love the way that it turned out. And it's on a piece of vintage book paper that I tore out of an old book. So this is the other side. It's really sort of rare to find an old children's book where there is blank pages on one of the sides. So I really felt like I struck gold when I found this book because I love the look of this paper. And the other thing that I like about it is that it's very smooth to draw on. And so it's one of my favorites right now, but I'm actually running out of this paper. I'm almost to the end. But as you can see, the paper's kind of ripping in a few different places. So I actually like that. I think it adds to the character of the drawing. This is another sketch that I did, and I created this sketch on Strathmore, Strathmore's oil painting paper. I really like this paper, especially for even wet mediums. And I, it has this really beautiful linen finish. And I used a Derwent ink tense pencil to sketch this one and then also activated it with water. So you could do something similar with any kind of water soluble pencil, any pencil that's activated with water. This is a really fun exercise to do. This also, again, is on the same book paper that I was discussing just a minute ago. And I created this sketch with acrylic ink and a paintbrush. And I really love sort of the loose messiness of it. I think it's really fun. And again, I'm drawing the same reference photo in both of these. This is a photograph of a peony that I took myself. And this is just a contour drawing, a continuous contour drawing. 
And the whole purpose of doing a sketch like this is actually really just to become better at sketching and sort of loosen up in, in the sketching process. So I would just suggest that when you do a drawing like this, you might not actually like the end product, but that's okay because it's really just about getting better and also just about loosening up and not having a perfect end product. And this is another version of this. I actually just did two of the same exact thing. And then I want to talk about this one. I also have a book that's an old scrapbooking book that has all this vintage craft paper. Let me show you what it looks like. It looks just like this and it's kind of falling apart, but I've just been tearing out these pages here. And these are really actually not too difficult to find. I've collected a few over the years. What's a little bit more rare is having is being able to find a scrapbook that hasn't been totally filled up. So I feel like I hit the jackpot on this one because there's a lot of blank pages in this book. This sketch is on that paper and I am using a variety of pencils and I, I believe I was also using some pastels as well. And then I finished it off with some white acrylic paint. This one wasn't really my favorite way to explore and I'm not exactly sure why that was. I think the pencils were just a little bit more tedious and I will say that anytime you try to use a activated water soluble pencil on this paper, it doesn't really work really well. So in some ways I just felt a little bit limited by using the pencils on this substrate. I, it just felt really tedious to me and not as free flowing as I personally would like. But if you're maybe more of a detailed drawing, um, if you're more of a detailed type of artist, excuse me, this might be a sketch that you want to explore. This one is really fun. And again, this is on that same paper that I showed for the scrapbook. And this one I started with black gesso and then drew some lines with my white Jelly Roll Sakura gel pen. And I drew the design out first, and then I added in little chunks of color. I added just some shapes in some different areas. I used gelatos, which Faber-Castell makes these gelatos. They're really fun. That is the areas where there's a little bit thicker of lines. And then I also used some acrylic markers. Currently, my favorite brand right now is these Thule Art markers. They're acrylic paint pens. I'm not exactly sure on the quality, but what I love about them is they have so many colors and I just order mine straight from Amazon. I really love the colors that they provide and they sell like packs of, of green and pinks. So it comes like this and I love all of their greens. Honestly, they have some of my favorite colors. So I used acrylic markers. I think I might have also used some pastels as well. And I think that's pretty much it. I don't think I brought any actual acrylic paint in this one. Okay, so let's move through. These are two sketches that I created at the same time. 
I'm working on found vintage papers. One I got in a ledger book that makes a really beautiful substrate for sketching. And you can see there's some of the original handwriting underneath, really gorgeous. This is an embroidery pattern that I collected. Again, found papers, vintage. You can find so many different great found papers. I like to look at thrift stores. I also like to source some of my papers from Etsy as well. So there's those. Oh, and in terms of supplies, I'm using for these messy brush strokes, I'm using heavy body acrylic paints. And that's how I'm starting these sketches, just painting the shapes that I see in some flowers, some inspiration photos. And I start with that and then I add in some details with my just a simple black pilot pen. Any kind of gel pen would also work. And then I'm also finishing these sketches off with some acrylic markers. These are so much fun and I love the depth that you can get with messy brush strokes. Here's another sketch, again on that same paper. I started with a dark blue background square and built my composition from there. Again, it's very similar to these ones where I'm starting with messy brush strokes for all of the main shapes in the flowers and then I'm adding all of the details with the acrylic markers and with gel pens as well. This one, I really love the way that it turned out. And this one is actually kind of fun. Again, same paper, but, and I am using lots of messy brush strokes, but actually this paper was a test sheet where I went through all of the different materials and supplies that I wanted to test out on my papers first. And I just sort of made a mess making marks and lines all over the place. And then I took that paper that was just kind of my exploration of what materials and supplies I actually want to use on this paper and then I turned it into an abstract floral. So it was a little bit working from a place where everything was a little bit messier and then turning it into a floral and I like to work like that a lot. I love abstract florals so I enjoy working from an abstract background. This is a really fun one as well. And all I did for this is I did a background with a almost a watercolory, messy wa like wash background, but I did it by watering down some acrylic paint. And it gave this really fun watercolor background. And then what else I did for this is I had an inspiration photo and I just set a timer for 10 minutes and I quickly painted as fast as I could the shapes that I saw in that photograph. I got my whole palette ready before I started. That's key because you'll run out of time otherwise. So I got the palette ready. I painted all the shapes as fast as I possibly could and just let it be loose and messy and free. And then once it dried, I came back in with gel pens and also with acrylic markers to give it more definition and shape and detail. This one I think was one of my favorite ways to work. And I think I'm going to try this some more. This is another one where I took my, one of my test 
sheets. And I just realized something. Maybe I should show you exactly what I mean by a test sheet. I know I have some extras. For example, this is exactly what I was talking about. So when I want to use a, before I use a piece of paper, I actually like to test out all of my materials on that substrate because not every kind of material is going to work or play nicely with every type of paper. And what I've noticed happens sometimes is that artists will go to sketch or draw and the material does not work well on the substrate. They automatically get frustrated because it's not doing what they want it to do and they internalize it and think, oh, I must be a really crappy artist. But honestly, most of the time, it has more to do with the way that the materials and supplies are responding to the substrate. And you won't be as successful as an artist if you don't test those things out first. And working on a lot of these vintage type papers, you don't really know how they're going to respond to materials and supplies. And so it's good to kind of get a better feel for what is going to work and what isn't going to work before you jump in. I also wrote down on the back of my papers what works well on that paper. And I made a list so that I could refer back to it later. So this is exactly what I was talking about. Taking a piece like this, where I'm just making a mess and testing out supplies, and then turning it into something like this. This ended up not really being my favorite piece, but that's okay because not everything is going to hit the mark, especially when you're doing this informal work because you want it to inform your decisions. You want to learn and to grow from it. If you don't explore something that you don't like, you'll never find what you do like. And it's so important to do this because it, it helps you decide where to go from here. This one, I don't know that, I, I think it just got a little bit too busy for me. And therefore, it's just not my favorite sketch. Does that mean that, you know, I'm a crappy artist or that I should feel bad about it? No, it just means that maybe in the future, I'm not going to play this way as much or I think may, maybe what happened is all of the all of the marks got a little bit too busy and I think it probably just needs some editing and pulling back. I also don't particularly like the color of the background. I don't think it really highlights the bright flowers very well and I'm not exactly sure why but it's not my favorite. So asking yourself these questions what do I like about the sketch? Why do I like it? I like a lot of some of the messier areas, but I don't think it really shines because I feel like there's too much happening. And so the next time I do one of these, I think I will probably try to just edit it out a little bit more. And I don't have to do anything with this piece. That's the beauty of doing these informal works on paper. I don't have to like it and I don't have to do anything else with it. I can just, you know, if I wanted to throw it away, I'll probably end up just offering it up for sale because someone else might like it and that's okay. So I just want to speak to that because I think we put so much pressure on ourselves to create a masterpiece every single time and it's okay if you don't like it a sketch. That's what's really kind of cool about it. This one is one of my favorites. I really love the way that all the different blues play together. So again, I've started with an ink sketch in pen and then I 
added a whole bunch of other layers of line work. And what I really love about it is there's different qualities of line. There's not just the really skinny blue pen, which was the beginning of my drawing, but there's all these thicker lines. And I think having more than one line quality works really well for sketching. It creates dimension and interest in your piece. And also it creates movement. I also have a variety of design elements that are some that are smaller and then some areas that are bigger, so chunks, right? And so that creates the, a rhythm in my piece that allows for your eye to be drawn around the paper. And I just love the way that this one turned out. It's mostly pen, marker, and then I did use some pastels to kind of finish it off just a touch. This one is also one of my favorites, and maybe you recognize the sketch. It was also the same reference photo, excuse me, that I used in both of these sketches. A little bit different because I'm using different materials and I knew that I wanted to do a really clean, simple ink sketch on the, this is Strathmore's oil painting paper again. And I just love the way that it turned out. And what is cool about this one is I did all of the sketch with a paintbrush. And I really love the amount of control that I got in this sketch. So I don't know, there's just something about it that just feels very graphic. And I like the level of detail in it. And I definitely know that I want to explore this way of sketching some more. This one is also really fun. This sketch is again, and this is just Liquitex acrylic ink also used on this sketch. And it's just black. And I created this sketch with my ink dropper. Now this is fun for those of you who are terrified of letting go of control. This is a great exercise for anyone wanting to loosen up in their work. It takes a level of just being okay with the mess. And I actually personally like the way that this one turned out. I think it's very dramatic and I like the messier lines that you get. So all you do is you basically get some ink in your dropper and then slowly let just a little bit out as you move your dropper around your paper. Just to let you know though, when you're using this technique for sketching, you will probably want to do it on a bigger substrate and you want a larger photo or a larger design element to sketch because you can't really get as much of fine details. It would be really hard for me to sketch this photo in this size with an ink dropper. I don't know if you can see how thick some of these lines are. That's kind of what happens when you use the ink dropper. You get a much thicker, bigger line. And so I would recommend sketching something that is a little bit bigger on a bigger piece of paper. Don't try to do this really small. And then also for both of these, I do think that using the ink on this oil painting paper with the linen finish really looks just nice and clean and crisp. I'm not exactly sure if I would get have would have gotten the same results 
on a piece of the vintage type of paper, just as an FYI. And then this sketch is really kind of fun. I actually just did this one as sort of a demonstration of how you can take a really simple line drawing, which I actually already had on this piece of paper. It was one of those things that I did years ago and I just had it sitting in my, my stash somewhere. And I decided that I really just wanted to add just a few little areas where there's some blocks of color and I did that with, I think I was using some pastels, some gelatos, and some acrylic markers. You could also use some pencils, I think. I almost want to say that I did use some pencils or some pastels in this. But I could continue to add some shapes to this drawing and just have a really interesting sketch. This, this technique is actually very similar to the black one, where I sketched the lines first and then added shapes just in a few different areas. If you want the sketch and the line work to still sort of be the star of the show, you don't wanna fill it in everywhere which is kind of how I, that is like one of my favorite style elements to explore. So I have a few other pieces that I wanna share. These are pieces that I actually sketched, but then I have mounted onto a board. So this one is a sketch again that I did for my course sketches on scraps and I actually started with shapes in this piece. I started by developing the shapes with some acrylic markers and then I continued by adding just some, I think maybe there's just a really small amount of paint in this one. Actual acrylic paint that I painted with a paintbrush, just a few, very few areas. And then I finished it with some pen and I wanted it to kind of feel a little bit messier, right? And I also added, what else did I add? I So acrylic markers, pen, a little bit of paint. I do believe there's some gelatos in here, some pencils, and maybe even some Neo Color 2s as well. But all I've done with my sketch is I just mounted it on some board with some Liquitex acrylic matte gel. And I was very careful because I didn't want to put it over the top so that it would activate all of the water soluble mediums. So I simply put it underneath and then really did a, a good job using like a credit card, making sure I got all the wrinkles out from underneath it. To finish this piece, I will most likely be spraying it with a varnish I really want to protect the paper as much as possible and protect the water soluble elements that I've used to sketch this piece. The other nice thing about mounting some of these papers that are falling apart, right? The ones that are falling apart right here, it's going to preserve the paper a little bit more than if I was to just sell this piece just like this, if that makes sense. So this is one that I mounted on a board and I will probably do that with a few more of my sketches. This is really fun because it takes the sketches that you really enjoy and you can turn it into a finished piece of artwork that you can then sell 
and it's a little bit more marketable, I suppose, because people don't always love actual works on paper. Some people actually prefer it, but not everyone does. So those are most of the sketches that I did for sketches on scraps. I want to share something else that I just recently did and just share probably what I'm going to do with it. I recently got a visit from one of my long time online art friends, Robin Marie Smith. We've known each other for years and years and years. And she was out here for a retreat and I got to spend the whole day with her and we actually went thrifting. And one of the finds that we found was this gorgeous architectural drawing paper. So there was a whole roll that I got and I'm actually gonna do a sketch on some of this paper. I just love it. Look at this. I think what I love about it so much is I love all of this blue pen line on the paper. It's so fun. So while we were hanging out, we actually just had some time to actually just play. And I don't know if you can see all of it. We had some time to just play and sketch. And what I love about sketching is a lot of the materials are so easy to travel with. And so I created this sketch. We went back to her Airbnb and we just played for a few hours. And this was a sketch that we that I created when we were playing. It was not just her, but another gal, Susie, who I also knew online, who's taken my classes and even collected some of my artwork. And we just had a wonderful afternoon of playing and sketching. And so what I love about it and what I was just saying is that I love the fact that working in this way you can take it anywhere. You just need a few simple supplies and they are so mobile. And so I just took some of my mark making supplies. I took just like five or six acrylic paints and this was the sketch that I did that afternoon. So what I think I'm going to do with this piece is I, because I didn't really cut it very square, right? Uh, I wasn't thinking about it being a certain size. So I think I'm gonna mount it on this board and possibly add some sort of collage around the edges to kind of make it feel a little bit, not so wonky in terms of the size and shape of the paper. And then I was looking at this wallpaper Maybe I want to put this like down here on the edge somewhere. But again, I just wanted to share this with all of you. I really like the way that this one turned out. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I actually want to do a sketch on this paper with all of you. So the one of the biggest problems with this paper is that it's on a roll, right? And so when I was looking at it, I've already cut two different pieces here, but the problem with it is that it it's going to not really lay flat very well. And so what I'm doing is I just have this is just a, actually a piece of cardboard. You could use any kind of board. You could even use a clipboard, which I do have a clipboard, but it's much larger than the size of this paper and it would be too much of a pain. 
I actually thought about taping the paper down to a surface, but then I didn't really want to damage the paper. So I decided to just take some little chip clips and I've just clipped the paper around the edges so that it will lay flat while I'm sketching. So let's go ahead and start sketching on this blueprint paper here. And if you remember, I clipped the edges down to a piece of cardboard. And I think what I'm gonna do is a bouquet. And I'm thinking I want my center of interest flower to be right around here. So I have a whole bunch of these acrylic markers and these are Thule art markers. I just purchased a whole bunch of different colors on Amazon. And what I love about them is they are extremely affordable and just easy to use. So I am just going to start drawing a flower out here. And at this point, I just kind of want to get the lines of my flower. And so I'm drawing actually a peony, which is my favorite flower. And so I'm just drawing the lines. doesn't have to be perfect. The whole point of creating in this way is to do a lot more informal work. So that you can get better as an artist. So I like to just take all sorts of different supplies. So I could even come in with some gel pen. I like to have a variation of line quality for my sketches. So that means that I like using gel pens mixed with markers. And I might even come in with some gelatos as well. So what's fun about the gelatos is they have sort of a thicker line. That color doesn't really show up so great on this paper. This one is not bad. So I'm just wanting to have some layered lines happening. I can even come in with some white. I love these acrylic markers for layering, but it looks like my white is kind of out of juice at the moment. So I don't know, what else was I gonna grab? Oh, I was gonna do some parts of the center of this flower here. I think that one of the things that happens as you start to develop as an artist, we, we get away from our creative practice. And it's really easy to do because we often are making like more finished pieces. I know this is so true for myself and you know, it might be commissions or paintings to list in my Etsy, but what happens is I get out of the practice of really just exploring in a much more loose and formal way. And so then I am sort of more invested in the pieces and therefore I don't take as many risks with my work. So one of the things that happens though, and this is completely normal, is that you will, because you're kind of 
stretching yourself and doing things that don't necessarily come automatically. And anytime you're stepping out of the box in your creative practice, you run the risk of making something that you don't actually love. And, you know, I think that sometimes as artists, we end up playing it too safe because we're just too afraid to kind of take that extra risk, right? And so I think that's really why I wanted to create this course is just because I felt like I personally just needed to give myself permission to get back to just playing, you know? I think that it's so important to be willing to make really bad art. I wonder if this pencil will work on here. It doesn't seem like it's, it's not super dark, but it could be a little bit better. So that's really where the idea for this course came from. I almost feel like I want to add in some acrylic paint as well. And I think I have a palette somewhere close by. And I think I just want a few little areas where I have just a, a few bigger blocks of color And what this is gonna do is it's actually going to help this flower kind of stand out a little bit more on this paper. I, I really enjoy layering in my sketches. So anytime I can layer some acrylic markers with some acrylic paint or other drying utensils, then I, I just love the look of layers for pieces like this. So I might even come in, this is a pastel pencil and it's by Stablio. But I just love that. I love this like layered lines with shapes and using different sketching materials here. So I'm just gonna continue to play for a little bit and I'm just going to continue to add some shapes and lines and create a layered sketch of flowers here.
everyone, this piece is finished. I just want to thank you for joining me for this video. I just want to mention really quickly what I did to continue working on this painting slash sketch is I really just got out my acrylic paints and painted in some of the shapes that I wanted to develop for my sort of abstract floral here. So I just chose some different colors and if you noticed, I for each flower I chose several shades of mostly the same color. Sometimes I did like in this one I did like some purples with a magenta color. So I kind of mixed in between those two colors. But yeah, I think this one turned out really fun. About halfway through, I got a little bit frustrated with the composition because I felt like this flower in here, this peony that I really wanted to be sort of the center of interest to the whole bouquet, I felt like it was a little bit lopsided. And so when I came back to my sketch, I realized that it needed a little bit more balance. And so what I did was I added this dark green leaf in through here. And I think that gave it enough grounding because I was kind of feeling like it was a little bit too far over to this side and I needed something to really anchor it back into the center of my paper. And so I think that helped a lot. But I just want to encourage you because the whole point of sketching like this and painting as well is that you really just want to stay loose and informal. It's not necessarily about having a amazing end product. It's just about play and it's about not taking your art so seriously. And so I think this one was a really fun exploration and I hope you enjoyed watching me create it. And remember that if you want to learn more about all the different ways that I like to play with sketching, please head over to my website, class.wendybrightville.studio and check out my latest course, which is called Sketches on Scraps. I hope to see you there.